Hello beautiful people, uh, this is your story Christine with Exhibit Africa Inc. I'm glad to be back once again to share some more fun and interesting facts about another beautiful country from the beautiful continent of Africa and the country that I'm, that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is Libya. I hope you're ready, I hope you're comfortable because I have quite a lot to share with you as far as Libya goes. So uh, please make yourselves comfortable. And again, this is uh, brought to you by courtesy of uh, Exhibit Africa Ubuntu Initiative. And uh, these fun facts have been compiled by everyculture.com if you want to check them out. All right, so let's get started with Libya. So uh, the era of Libya, uh, as we all know, Libya has a, a long history, just like many other countries. About, uh, However, uh, the uh, this era of Libya that I'm going to share with you is the uh, Muammar Gaddafi era and a little bit of history going back. So let's look at the alternative names for Libya. So Libya was uh, referred to as the socialist popular Libyan Arab Jamahiriya. All right. Uh, currently, it's uh, uh, Lib Lib Libya is referred to as the state of Libya. Now, let's go into the orientation. Okay, so the socialist popular Libyan Arab Jamahiriya uh, literally means state of the masses. Uh, is a nation that has been undergoing radical social experiment over the last 30 years. This experiment has been underwritten by massive oil revenues and directed by the revolutionary government of Muammar Gaddafi. Once again, I want to uh, remind you that uh, the facts I'm going to be share, sharing some of the interesting facts are a little up, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, backdated uh, during Muammar's uh, Muammar Gaddafi's time. That's Libya's former president and. Uh, a little further back as well okay so let's move on to the location and geography situated on the coast of north africa nearly all the nation's land masses is within the sahara desert the country is bounded to the north by the mediterranean sea to the west by tunisia and algeria and to the south by chad and niger all nigel as some people may pronounce it Egypt borders Libya to the east and Sudan to the southeast. The landmass is uh, 679 uh, point five thousand square miles, uh, which makes Libya the fourth largest country in Africa. Okay, let's move on to the provinces that make up Libya. Tri Tritopo uh, Tripolitania on the western coast, Srinaika, to the east and Fezzan in the south are influenced by the Great Sahara in different ways. Tripolitania is, is sheltered by barrier mountains, the, Jab the Jabal Nafusa south of the coast, while the mountains create a favorable environment of, uh, for agriculture. The coastal, littoral pro uh, the coastal littoral protected from the Sahara is still arid and requires irrigation. The capital of Libya, Tripoli, is an oasis of the Tripolitanian coast and its inhabitants rely on aquifer, aquifers to meet most of their water requirements. The coastal mountain range of Srinaika, the Jabal Akada, rises, rises to a high plateau which breaks uh, which breaks precipitously down to the sea. There are five distinctive ecologic zones in the region, from a high plateau in the north to the desert in the south, each with different combinations of pastoralism and agriculture. There are large towns in Cyrenaica, but until recently, the nomadic Benuins dominated the countryside. The Gulf of uh, Sete is between Eastern Tripolitan, uh, Tripolitan and the mountain chains in Cyrenaica. Primarily steep country, it is situated to it is suited uh, to pastoral pursuits 
and historically has been a major seasonal grazing ground to some of the powerful tribes who spend winters in the interior of the desert. South of the mountain chains and the Gulf of Sete lies the Sahara Desert and the province of Fezzan. The area is vast, uh, is vast, extremely dry and barren. It's characterized by large sand seas, eroded mountain ranges, and upland mesas. Aridity is a fact of existence in Libya. There is not a single permanent waterway in the whole country. Permanent, center, permanent settlement in the south is limited to a number of depressions where irrigate, irrigated agriculture may be pursued due to easily accessible supplies of fresh water from deep, deep aquifers. These oases produce a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and support extensive plant uh, support extensive dead plantations. While these areas contain highly productive agriculture systems, they are restricted in population size due to the limited um, amounts of water available for irrigation. Now let's move on to the demography. The vast land has extremely small uh, has extremely small population estimated at 1.5 million as of 2000 including uh, approximately 163,000 non-nationals. The indigenous population is homogeneous with 90% claiming to be of Arab ancestry. While largely rural, the massive oil wealth beginning in the 1960s changed the economic and residential profile of the population. For instance, between 1954 and 1964, the citizen population of Tripoli grew by 58%, while Benghazi grew by 66%. A five-year plan introduced in the 1960s was geared to bring prosperity to rural areas. Its success slowed the migration of the urban areas and made, uh, and made paid employment widely available throughout the country. The oil industry brought large numbers of European and North American workers in the country. Oil revenues allowed the state uh, to greatly expand its workforce while the wealth, stim while the, while, uh, the wealth stimulated the private sector. Thus, over the years, large numbers of guest workers have found their way to Libya from Eastern Europe and the surrounding Mediterranean and Arab states. Let's move on to the linguistic affiliation. The, bond, the Bedouin invasion of North Africa in the 11th century brought the Arab language to Libya. In the western mountains of Libya, the Berber language is still spoken in places and the remnants of it remain in the southern oasis. Still, Libya is, car is culturally homogeneous. Its citizens speak a distinctive dialect of Arabic in public, while modern standard Arabic is taught in schools and used in government and businesses. In culture, language, and religion, Libya forms a part of the greater Arab world. Let's get into the history and ethnic relationships. Relations. Beg your pardon. Let's see uh, the emergence of the nation. In Libya, as in most of the Middle East and North Africa, the modern concept of territory discrete nation is a recent development. Historically, Libya was characterized by sets of connections between relatively autonomous poly polities. Even under the Turkish rule in the 19th century, the city of Tripoli was more of a city state with commercial links to a politically autonomous countryside rather than a center of integrated rule. A large tented population of the pastoral nomads, independent and aggress aggressively autonomous, resided in the steep and des steppe and desert to the southeast and the west. Smaller towns uh, smaller, uh, I beg your pardon. Smaller towns are some similar in commerce, trade, and political aspiration 
to, to that of Tripoli occupied the shores of the Mediterranean to the west and east. The town of Misarata, with the support of the powerful Benwin tribe, tribal allies of the Wafala Confederacy, challenged Tripoli's uh, hegemony. To the south, the richly endowed agriculture communities of the Jabal Mafus Mafusa Mountains maintained an opposition of the coastal powers. While with abundant rainfall and a temperate climate, crops were plentiful, citrus and olive groves abund uh, abounded. Communities maintained independence, some supported by their kin among the powerful Kamo herding tribes in the south. Everyone was aware of the military proneness and the political autonomy of the tribes. Let's move on to uh, Seneca. Sarainika had a similar but more distinctive antagonism between the desert and the town and between pastoral tribes and sedentary agriculture society. Important towns like Ajabdabia Ajab and Benghazi were isolated from a countryside occupied by the Bedouin tribes who numbered over 90% of the province's population. The country was divided amongst the so-called noble tribes, all landowners, all linked to one another through a common genealogical ped ped pedigree from a common ancestress, Sada. In the south, there was a similar opposition between the oasis communities and the tribes. Much of Libya was organized into agriculture centers surrounded by tribally organized Benduin nomads. There, were no sense, there was no sense of nation. Instead, there was a series of social structures bound by the material conditions of trade in both practical and luxury goods. The only 19th century institution that may be considered a defining characteristic of the country was the presence of the Turkish administration, the Portier. Even here, the Portier was at a loss uh, to exert its influence outside of its administrative centers. Uh, the nascent strides toward a national identity began with the Italian invasion invasion in the early 20th century. The first Ita Italian invasion in 1911 focused on the fertile coastal plain of uh, Trip Tripolitania and the city of Tripoli, where the political fragmentation gave the Italians an easy victory. Libya allies were easy to gain if not to maintain. Having secured a foothold on the coast, the Italians mistaken, mistakenly turned, into, turned their attention to the Fezzan. They marched south, although the Al Jufra Oasis, they marched south through the Al Jufra Oasis to Seba, the modern capital of Fazan, securing towns on on their own. Once in Seba, the tribes allied, cut off the garrison, and harassed the Italians as they tried to fight their way back to the coast. A decisive battle was fought in Sate, where the tribes under the Ulad. Selman defeated the Italians who then withdrew from the from the countryside. In 19 in 1934 a more determined Italian force invaded. This time the primary opposition came from Cyrenaica where the tribes rallied under the banner of Sanusi, religious order and the leadership of such national heroes such as Umar al mukhtar A brutal and bloody tenure Tenia guerrilla war followed, pitting the modern military might of the Italians against a largely subsistence based nomadic society. It is claimed that nearly 50% of the population of Cernaica perished during the struggle. The guerrilla war represents an historical struggle in the minds of the Libyan people and its leader under Umar al Umar, Umar Carter became uh, Libya's first national hero. The king of Libya, Idris, the head of the Sanusi order, remained in exile during the colonial period, a symbol of regional, if not national, opposition to the Italians. 
he lent his support and that of his forces to the Allied war effort in World War II in exchange for a promise of national independence. The United Nations or the the United Nations awarded Libya independence in 1951 and economic stability was assured by grants in aid from the United States and several European countries. Let's look at the national identity. In, 1999, in 1969, Libya underwent a revolution with far-reaching consequences for the countries both national and international. Muammar Gaddafi emerged as a leader of the country under the regime a series of far-reaching social experiments have been tried producing somewhat unique political system internationally the pan-arab and the left leftist leanings of the regime have had an impact as the immense oil wealth as the immense oil wealth of the country has allowed the leadership uh, a position of the na on the national stage disappropriate to the country's size the majority of the libyans have a, have a pride in nation the third the birth of the nation and the heroics of umal umal al mukater and the 19, uh, 1969 revolution are commemorated in annual national celebrations as are the major religious events on the Islamic calendar. Let's look at the ethnic relations. Although the Libyan people are in culture, although the Libyan people are in culture, language and religion largely homogeneous, there has been and is still a significant culture minorities. Until the last half of the 10th, 20th century, there were relatively large Jewish and Italian communities in the country. Members of the Jewish community began to migrate to Israel in 1948 and several anti-Israel riots in 1948, 1956 and 1967 and 1973 encouraged further migration. In 1973, the revolutionary regime of Muammar Gaddafi confiscated all property owned by the non-resident Jews. Also, in 1973, uh, Gaddafi's regime invited 45,000 Italian residents who remained fr from, the Ita from the Italian colonial era to leave the country and all Italian properties were confiscated by the state. Black Libyans are descendants of slaves brought to the country during the days of slave trade. Some worked the gardens in the South Oasis on the farms along the coast. Others were taken by the Bedouin tribes or merchant families as retainers and domestics. Baba people form a large but less distinctive minority in the Libyan population. The original inhabitants in the, no, in the, most, uh, in the most of North Africa, they were overrun in the 11th and 12th century by the Bedouin Arab armies of the expanding Islamic empire. Over the centuries, the Berber population largely fused with the conquering Arabs. Evidence of Berber culture still remains. The herdsmen and traders of the Great Tuareg Federation are found in the south, known as the Blue Men of the Desert. Their distinctive blue dress and the practice of men unveiling distinguish them culturally from the rest of the population. Historically, autonomous and uh, fiercely independent, they stand apart from other Libyans and maintain links to their homelands in the Tibet Sea and Ahaga mountain retreats in, in the central Sahara. Now, let's look at urbanization, architecture, and use of space. Modern Libyan architecture throughout the country reflects the impact of the spectacular oil wealth. Modern apartments, buildings, and uh, government and private office complexes abound in, the abound in the major urban centers, while government housing is a characteristic of the countryside. However, the distribution of political power among the sectors of Libyan society to some degree is reflected. Still, in traditional forms of architecture, 
world fortifications a testimony of tribal power as well as a reminder of the past as a pirate piratical state dominate the old section of tripoli similar concerns are securely or uh, securely characterized other ancient libyan towns in the mountains of tripolitania some settlements were constructed completely underground on hillsides these towns of uh, troglo Tro troglodytes remain uh, remain maintained security by having only one entrance Further south, the concern for defense also was a characteristic of architecture. Most oasis communities were walled and fortified. In the, in the Shokar oasis of Al, of Al Jufra, for instance, the fortified wall extended around the entire residential area. There were only two gated entrances to the community. Uh, the wall and uh, parapets at intervals of 20 yards to allow defenders to catch the enemy in crossfire. In the center of the walled town stood a large fort whose ramparts, uh, whose ramparts commanded um, a line of fire on all sections of the outer wall. It stood at the last it stood at the last line and essentially should the town be overthrown. In many towns, the traditional pattern of residence was a dense settlement of domestic units inside a fortified perimeter with agricultural lands lying at the same distance from the residential areas. Libyan towns are characterized by strict, dis by strict distinctive, disti uh, I beg your pardon, Libyan towns are characterized by strict dis distinction between public and private use of space. The street cafes, mosques, and shops are man's world, while the domestic compound is the woman's world. The gardens usually worked by families as sanctuaries, not to be entered by strangers. The compact nature of fortified residential centers gives them a distinctive character. Uh, streets are narrow and twisting. In some areas, keen groups looking to extend their space available for developing extended families have joined houses at the second story level over the street to extend living quarters. The bridging effect produces long canopied cul-de-sacs where keen groups may convert public to private space by getting the residential quarter. Whole communities may extend this concept of the privacy of space to the reception of strangers. The use of space in, in relation to social distance is a major feature of Libyan custom. Public space is busy, bustling. Public space is a busy, bustling man's world. Private space is rigidly defined for men as is public space for women. Traditional house designs represent no windows at the first floor level. Houses may have windows at the second level, but they are buried, sometimes with elaborate iron filigree. There is usually only one entrance through a heavy wooden door. Some of the most more luxurious homes have a large rectangular uh, courtyard with elaborate gardens and fountains. The courtyard is completely enclosed, as is the private world of the immediate family. A wide balcony runs at the full range and width of the second story and is accessed by one or two elegantly designed staircase. As the residence to a largely extended family, rooms and apartments lead off from the center of the house on all sides of both levels. In the houses of prominent persons and local notables, another set of stairs is located immediately inside the front door with a view of the inner sanctuary of the cant of the courtyard. These stairs lead to the guest room or marabo, a quasi public space with, within the confines of the intensely private home. The head and the household entertains friends, business associates, clients, political supporters, and delegates in the marabo. Some of these rooms may accommodate as many as 50 guests. 50 guests. The marabo is almost rectangular with mattresses lining the walls provide seating and bedding for guests guests are stranger guests who are strangers are confined to this chamber and will not meet the women of the household 
Intended communities as part your use of the distinctive of the distinction between public and private spaces are similar uh, to that observed in the towns. Pastoral society has less of a problem defining public space. Benduin camps consist of closely related kin and the physical distance between family groups is in the same tribal section reinforces privacy. For most of their Benduin camps, Benduin camps spread across the countryside with groups separated from each other by several miles. Camps consist of discrete domestic units residing in tents that are placed in a single line. Camps are organized uh, to meet the complex demands of herd, man of herd management and cottage industry. Individual uh, male herd owners cooperate to accomplish the difficult task of managing several different herds with varied grazing and maintenance requirements. Male cooperation also ex extends to producing charcoal and to planting and harvesting cereal crops in years of plentiful rain. Women aid each other in weaving and spinning the wool and hair from the flocks, making tent tops, blankets and storage bags, and milking and processing the products from the herds. Although members of the camp cooperate in daily activities, each married male member of the camp is an independent head owner with sons receiving their share of the family herd upon marriage. Let's look at the food and economy. Food is food in normal daily life reflects the simplicity of a peasant and nomadic lifestyle. Libyan cooking styles are similar whether rural or urban, sedentary or nomadic. Main courses are almost always one pot dish. Couscous or cracked wheat, uh, the national dish, is prepared in a spicy sauce of hot peppers, tomatoes, chickpeas and vegetables in season. All meals are eaten out of a, a communal bowl. Meals are of great symbolic importance in the houses or the tents of prominent men. The major meal of the day is rarely, is rarely the, the major meal of the day rarely is taken without invited guests. Most meals are frugal and simple with the daily consumption of meat kept to a minimum. The Benoin the rarely consume meat more than once a month. Agriculturists always seem to have adequate supplies of fruit, vegetables, and grain. Nomads have an abundance of milk, dates, and, um, in gr and grain in most seasons. In both town and desert, meals are ended with three glasses of green tea, preparation and consumption of which is, this is a distinct ritual. Let's look at the... Uh, uh, the uh, food customs are ceremonial occasions. Meals are prepared by the women to the household and served to the guests by young men of the household. Food is served on low tables, tall enough to allow guests to sit cross-legged and to belly up to the edge. Meals served in the tented society vary slightly from uh, from presentation in towns in tented society important guests are honored with uh, with sacrificial slaughter of a goat or a sheep in towns sacrifice is not as frequent because they usually because they usually is easy access to daily markets the animal is butchered and the flesh is boiled to form the essential ingredient of the stew to be served over couscous Sometimes various types of pasta may be used as a, subsist, as a substitute for couscous. The main course usually is uh, preceded by dried dates, milk, and buttermilk. Each liquid is served in large communal bowl. Libyans drink green tea after all meals throughout the day. Lavish meals are prepared for almost all rich occasions. Special and elaborate meals are prepared uh, daily during the month of Ramadan, where the daily fast is broken by a meal after sunset. Let's look at the basic economy. The two major components of the traditional Libyan economy were agriculture and pastoralism, both largely subsistence activities. Most agriculture communities are kin based, organized through patrilineal descent. Differences in wealth produced uh, a class of local notables who uh, relied upon the community 
for their influence and power. There was a tendency for communities to view themselves as corporate groups rather than agricultural communities or pastoral hinterlands. There were influential trading families in larger commercial centers, but their power in the, wind, in the hinterland was limited. Communities tended to be self-contained and were based on subsistence activities in which families provide for most of their needs from their own labor. Surpluses were traded in local markets and exchanged in networks of pastoral families. The economic specialization of pastoral and agriculture communities fostered cooperation as town and country thought each other's products. The Benwin supplied uh, supplied the towns with meat, wool, hides, uh, clarified butter, and security. Markets in the towns provided necessary and luxury goods from artisans and traders, guns and animation, and agriculture products. Let's look at the land tenure and property. Traditionally, property was occasionally held communally, but most agricultural land was held privately. Land, fragment, land fragmentation led to a degree of, source of local social stratification in which sharecropping developed. Generally, agriculture expanded into marginal lands, mixing agriculture with herding. These communities were largely egalitarian. We are largely egalitarian and less fortunate members of the community could count on support from their kinsmen. In the pastoral realm, families owned their heads individually and secured land for grazing and watering rights as members of patrilineally based corporations. Tribal, uh, tribal powerful tribes claimed ownership of the discrete blocks of territory. A tribe is composed of a number of corporate land owning groups who define relations between themselves according to their relative position in the tribal genealogy. Tribal territory was subdivided between tribal sections following a, genealogy, a genealogical character. This, oh sorry, following a genealogical charter. This charter of descent links the ancestors of the living corporate land owning descent groups to each other in clearly defined measures of genealogical closeness or distance. Thus, the members of one corporate land-owning group see the members of an adjust, adjacent group as having rights of their territory by virtue of their descent from the brother of the founder of their own group. Let's look at the major industries. Libya has been described as a hydrocarbon state since oil cells have all all per pervasive role in the Libyan economy, politics and social structure. The discovery of oil in the late 1950s radically altered development and ushered in a period of massive economic redirection. In the first phase of exploitation, the oil companies spent large sums and expenditures increased rapidly. The first substantial oil revenues were paid to the government in 1962 and these revenues increased dramatically during the 1960s providing rapid expansion in both private and public sectors two other industries that grew rapidly during the 1950s and 60s were construction and transport construction particularly in the cities increased dramatically while sections of tripoli were built during this time construction was under was undertaken to the to provide suitable quarters for the new local and foreign companies that grew in Libya. There was also an increase in construction of private dwellings in this period. The uh, new construction provided accommodations for the increased population and thriving business community in Tripoli. Let's look at the trade. Today, uh, crude oil, refined petroleum products and natural gas constitute nearly all all Libya's exports totally six billion US dollars in 1890 in eight in 1989 major export partners were Italy German Spain France Sudan and the United Kingdom major imports included machinery transport equipment food and manufactured goods in 18 in 1989 Libya's major import partners were Italy German United Kingdom, France, Tunisia, and Belgium.
Let's look at the division of labor. The increase in the prosperity brought about a, uh, a large scale change in occupation. There was major decline in persons working in agriculture, but there was a sharp increase in laborers and, uh, and clerical sports and recreation and transport work, transportation workers. The oil boom had massively changed the occupation and residential structure of the population in just a few years. In the countryside, five-year plans of the 1960s ushered into, in a extens into an extensive into an exist uh, in the 1960s ushered into existence a period of rural pro prosperity when many nomadic families became uh, sedentary in order to take advantage of the steady wage employment a widely large scale patronage system developed that was administered through local political structures thus land barrel politics in a situation of radical economic uh, change, reinforced uh, family lineage, tribal and village structures. The traditional Libyan economy was continu uh, has continued to shrink as the oil economy has grown. By 1997, agriculture, account agriculture accounted for only 7% of the economic sector. While industry and services accounted for 47 percent and 46 percent respectively but not even but not even a revolution would dismantle the national lamb barrel let's look at the political life government on september the 1st 1969 a group of armed officers staged a successful bloodless coup that forced the king into exile and abolished the existing form of government Muammar Gaddafi quickly emerged as the undisputed leader. The group of young officers considered themselves revolutionaries, but none of them had had a background in revolutionary activity or schooling in radical politics. They aligned themselves with uh, Gam Gamal Abdul Nasser, leader of Egypt. Domestically, the conservation nature of the officers', officers policies became clear when they permanently closed nightclubs and prohibited all consumption of alcohol. They declared themselves to be the socialists in politics and conservation in Islamic religious practices. Once consolidated in power, the Revolutionary Command Council, RCC, undertook a series of radical initiatives to transform the economy, social and political organization of Libya. Uh, began in 1973, this, trans this transformation was guided by the Green Book written by Gaddafi. The thesis of this book is a, crit is a, cr is a critique of participatory, participatory, participatory democracy in which it argued that no man should represent another, but that the people should represent themselves directly. A contradictory argument of uh, Gaddafi is the building blocks of society, a family, tribe, and nation. In the early 1970s, radical reform to the political process was undertaken to bring about direct participation of the people in the national democratic process. The municipalities in the country were organized territorially, territorially and their management was placed in the hands of locally elected people's committees. These committees were responsible for local government and for the development of local budgets. Representations of the local committees represented budgets and other matters through a People's Congress, which met once a year to discuss matters of concern and deliver the fiscal demands. This became one, one, this became one mechanism through which Libya redistributed some of the national wealth and involved its citizens in a democratic process. In 1975, a crisis developed in the ruling RCC. And in, May, uh, and in the army concerning the course that the, the revolution should take. There was an attempted coup that was not successful. The army was punched and, purged, purged and the RCC disbanded. The five remaining royal RCC members were assigned to ministerial posts. Gaddafi, now firmly in control of the country, set a course that was anonymously disruptive for the country and the international community.
Internally, Gaddafi unleashed the young zealots of the revolution, urging, urging them to form revolutionary committees to instruct the people of the goals of the revolution. A reign of terror followed that was to last over a decade. Revolutionary courts were soon established and nearly all institutions of government and commerce were put under the scrutiny of these committees. Only the institutions of banking and oil industry were kept from the rich. Enemies of the revolution were, fer were ferreted out, tried secretly in re revolutionary courts, jailed, tortured, tortured, and subjected to long prison sentences or death. Faro uh, developed on the university campuses and on at least one occasion the, the student body witnessed the public hangings of fellow students who had been tried by students belonging to the revolutionary committee there were numerous public hangings of citizens or for crimes committed against the revolution many of which were broadcast on national television these measures were followed by other reforms which tore to the fabric of the libyan society private enterprise was abolished and all privately owned shops were closed and replaced by government a, run, a government run people's markets the regime nationalized all all non-owner occupied housing and conf, confirmed ownership of the occupants bureaucrats were sacked from the government ministries and in 1980s uh, Gaddafi demo, demonetized the currency severely restricting the amount of old money that citizens would convert to new money there were reports of, of outraged citizens burning large piles of money outside of the national bank. There were measure, the, these measures were adopted at a time when the world price of oil dropped severely, thus ushering in a decade of austerity in Libya. Gaddafi also cancelled the stipends uh, of thousands of Libyan students uh, studying abroad and ordered them to return home. Many chose not to return and large, a large number of citizens joined them in exile. Most of the better educated classes by the mid 1980s and as many as, many as 100,000 Libyans were living abroad. Many joining political groups opposed to the revolution. Wow. During the 80s, the consequences of the revolution were being felt abroad. Gaddafi argued the revolutionary committees to replace the diplomatic corps, uh, corps in Libyan embassies, renaming them People's Bureaus. Um, Gaddafi stepped up pressure on dissidents uh, and called for the oblig obligatory repatriation of all Libyan exiles. Non-compliance was a result in death. There was gang-style executions by, of Libyan nationals in several European cities. Wow. Okay. There's a lot uh, about, there's a lot that goes on here, but uh, due to time, I'm going to cut this short. So let's move on to uh, the military. The Libyan military has had a critical role in maintaining the Gaddafi regime in power. The support seems to have functioned from three perspectives. First, the military is extremely well-funded, although the exact figures were difficult to obtain. Libya has spent at least five billion U.S. dollars for military procurement, procurement every year since the late 1970s, with occasional military expenditures exceeding 40 percent of the total government expenditure. The country spent about 1,300 per capita in 1984. These figures are about twice the average capita spending on defense in for the for the NATO and are rivaled by only Israel, Saudi Arabia, and a few rich uh, Gulf Emirates. Second, these figures reflect an anonymous procurement process in which the senior military seem to have profited greatly. There are accounts of senior officers living opulent lifestyles, uh, building state, stately villas and acquiring properties outside of normal channels. There is a suggestion here that Gaddafi has brought their loyal, that had brought their loyalty third there's a hard evidence that the tribalism has a role in the army Gaddafi during the revolutionary era a era that he unleashed um uh appointed uh, he unleashed appointed his family members as his bodyguards trained his tribal kings as as elite 
army unit and during the revolutionary committee period appointed members of his tribe in the committee in the army the, the opulent economic favor nepotism and tribal royalty combined to assure that most of the powerful institutions in libya society continued to support the revolutionary and its leader wow let's go to the gender roles and uh statuses okay uh, the relative status of women and men a uh, the custom of uh, excluding and veiling women is a traditional feature of libyan culture life groups of veiled women are still found in markets in the company of kinsmen but they are in, in they are infrequent visitors to mosques and absent entirely from the cafe life Women are traditionally placed in ex in exclusive in exclusion at uh, uh, puberty and appear in public veiled. They are only freed from the custom at menopause. The push towards female emancipation has exhibited in the opening of public space for women, um, which may may be repealed at any time by either domestic male prerogative or national decree Gaddafi established a military academy for females and occasionally um, has arrived at international meetings accompanied by female bodyguards dressed in battle fatigue Gaddafi claims that Gaddafi claimed that men and women were radically different in biology and nature his view was that the nature of women is to nurture and her, and their role as mother in their role as mothers and domestic is part of their natural order where social life outside on the compound may be limiting to women due to the institute of pada within the household the movements of women are not constrained all all are close kin and many are descendants of a common ancestor as such they share common daily social life the movements of women are not restricted within the compound and both sexes may freely enter each other's abodes uh, 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 without invitation. Let's look at marriage, family, and kinship. This uh, descent, kinship, and marriage are major organizing factors in social, economic, and political life. Patrilineal descent, descent defines group membership, while kinship is is largely the product of marriage arrangements where the collective interests of dis descent groups are clearly defined the patterns of kinship and marriage will reflect these interests marriages are arranged by the parents in consultation with the members of the extended families and lineage uh, libya society like much of the arab world places a premium on a father's brother's daughter's marriage this rule of first right is so important that is strongly focused descent groups the male first cousin must waive his right to the girl before she's allowed to take a more socially distant spouse girls may marry at age 14 while men must usually wait until they are in their mid late 20s the age of the age qualification for marriage between cousin thus restricts this form of marriage Approximately 20% of the marriages are first right. Such arrangements give many decent groups a second set of social rel relations. Since the father, the father's brother's daughter's marriage removes the rule against a uh, group in endogamy found in other societies, people are free to arrange um, to arrange marriages within the group outside their the range of siblings and within generation. Thus, multiple strands of kinship, cross-cut group structure, and father reinforce the, co the corporate descent group. Although groups may strive toward endogamy, other interests of the family and corporate groups may lead to marriage being contracted between distant relatives. In Bonwin uh, society, it is normal for groups to contract marriage with groups in distant ecological zones. Failure on the on the reins in one territory may lead to an invitation by a more fortunate kin to visit and graze and water one's animals on 
on the other territory for the season. Occasionally, there are marriages between Bonduin and, and families of trading partners in, o, in Oasis. Marriages between adversaries in a feud may occur at the conclusion of the peace agreement. Marriages also are a way of binding groups in alliance since the offspring of, of successful unions will have rose keen in two different groups. Thus, marriage reflects family and group interests and the patterns wave a web of mutual interest between families, lineage and tribes. Marriage arrangements require that siblings are married subsequently according to age. For a man to marry, he must be able to pay bride price to the bride's family. Weddings may tax family resources because the more distantly re related because the more distantly related the bride, the higher the bride price. Groups of brothers work together to gather the resources necessary for marriage. In Bondwin society, the resources used to marry come from the family herds. In towns, men contribute a portion of their pay to a brother's bride price. Indications that in such urban areas, some of the uh, structures described above are seen have been modified from manifest in several ways. Many women are now have uh, many women are now seen unveiled in public. A recent report now claims that there are more female than male university students. And the Gaddafi regime has prohibited the admission of foreign women into the country and accompanied by senior male kinsmen. As the bride price for male order brides from surrounding Arab states is significantly less than less than for Libyan women. These suggestions of social transformation have not been adequately analyzed as yet. Let's look at the domestic unit. The social makeup of the Benwin camps almost always consists of closely related patrilineal relatives and their wives. A camp may consist of a large central tent housing and a couple and their unmarried sons and daughters. Adjacent tribes Adjacent tents will house married sons and their wives and children. Occasionally, a distant relative or friend and his family may join the camp for a, for a season. In the line of tents, social solidarities are expressed by the approximate, proximity of tents in the line. Close kins, brothers and, brothers and fathers position their tents so that the tent pages overlap and the, gui the guide ropes of the tents cross one another. The tent of a more remotely relative related member of the camp will be at the end of the line, a few yards from his neighbor without guide ropes crossing. Let's look at the kin groups. Descent groups with clearly focused interests usually reside in uh, contiguous residential structures. Mary uh, Mary ma, 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 and Dogmas and dogmatically cooperate in all social, economic, and political matters and have a highly ramified social life with the group. For the most part, life is extremely comfortable. The tribal land owning corporations are themselves patrilineal, are descent groups or lineage, lineages whose members acquire rights by virtue of being the sons and daughters of a particular man. In theory, all members of the groups are patrilineal descendants of the founder. Members are said to be one of one flesh and born with equal rights to the territorial resources. Equal rights are also imply equal obligations. Members have the obligation to defend the territory against encroachment of neighboring corporations. Liability is not an individual matter, but a matter between groups. Injury leads to a state of feud between groups in which all members of the offended group are required to take revenge against any male member of the offending groups. This can lead to anarchy with, with a continuous cycle of killing. Feuds have rules of conduct in which groups may decide to end the matter by a payment of a blood price, whereby the offending group must compensate the offended group for the loss of the life with payment. The members of the offending corporation must all contribute to the blood, blood price, while all members of the offended group share in the compensation. The institution of feud makes possible a fairly orderly set of relations between the competing groups where 
there are no institutions of government. While feuds may lead to peace through our settlement, the relationships between groups defined through the genealogy will lead to a standoff of equal members through opposition. The tribal segmentary system thus fosters an ethnic agaliatalism with its expressive expression found in the members of the uh, corporate patrilineal descent groups. Nicknaming within tribes is prevalent as an expression of individual personality. The descent group is an institute that gives pride to a place of its members, demands extreme loyalty to them, and provides a warm, nurturing support system to men and women of all ages. The oil wealth has, the oil wealth has radically transformed the Libyan economy and its demography, which with, with widespread urbanization and wage employment. The process has only partially undermined traditional social structures as they have first re as they were first reinforced by the pre-revolutionary patronage system and then by the most revolutionary political system in the urban areas where the constraints of family lineage and tribal tribe have no doubt loosened while the upper level bureaucrats a second major section of the new elite may answer to Gaddafi and his ruling clique this is not true for the rural areas these ties of family lineage tribe and residence will still remain dominant forms of organization the striking feature of libyan life is particularly as is, is partly the result of the implementation of the political structures described by Gaddafi in the green book local committee members and bureaucrats are themselves members of the local kin based groups whose loyalty they must retain and whose wishes they must consider while this is a society where immense oil may lead to radical social uh, transformation in the rural areas at least this has not happened yet there their cultural traditions have been slow to change as the political and economic institutions of government are refracted are refracted through the family lineage and tribal interests let's look at the socialization higher education libya has two universities several technical schools and a well-developed primary and secondary school by the mid 1980s there were one there, there was 1.2 million students enrolled in primary and secondary school education 54 percent were males and 46 were females during this period the government claimed to have constructed 32,000 new classrooms while the number of teachers increased from 19,000 to 79,000 university enrollments also showed dramatic increases from 3,000 students in 1969 to more than 25,000 students during the 1980s, with female enrollments numbering to about 80, uh, about 25 percent. Education is free, and university students receive generous stipends. Uh, even though large uh, strides have been made in Libyan education, the country still lacks technical expertise in many areas. The military lacks the skills, personality to adequately maintain their weapon systems. Most doctors, dentists, and pharmacists are foreign. Nationals, while 60% of Libya's top bureaucrats and 40% of the workforce are expatriates. Let's look at the ethic. A, a political stranger, even approaching a camp, will pause about 100 yards from the line of t tents. A series of activities uh, converting private into public space begins. Either one, either one tent in the line will be be vacated and converted into a guest tent or the large tent of the oldest male will be divided down in the middle to produce a guest compartment uh, separated from the domestic section entertainment of guests in tented society is similar to towns one difference in tented society is that the guest will not be asked his social identity until after the meal when the breaking of the bread has placed the guest under his host's protection the rule of the sanctuary ensures the members of rival groups or those in a few feuding relationship may travel the desert in relative safety. Let's look at religion. Most religious Libyans are more devout Muslims and practice a simple and deeply personal religion. Adults follow the structures of Islam. They pray five times a day, uh, give, uh, alarms, uh, give alarms to the poor and fast for the uh, fast for the month of ramadan there is certain austerity to libyan islam 
shaped by the harshness of traditional life. This sentism uh, was reinforced by the Sanusi order, which was abolished by the Gaddafi regime for political reasons. In its place, the regime instituted fundamentalist practices with very little impact on rural life, where the Libyan version of the, of the sectic Muslim is still practiced. Let's look at the religious uh, practitioners. The Umar or religious scholars have been upstaged by the regime, but in the countryside, Muslims uh, mo mosques are well attended. The folk um, religion of the people subscri subscribes in part or to a dev deviation from traditional Islam. In Libya, as in other parts of North America, the cult of saints the cult of saints is highly developed. There are individual living saints, marabout, whose miracles are widely reported and whose services in a curative capacity are, are sought. People also visit the tombs of men of reputation, seeking cures for illnesses, success and, and in business, and luck in passing an exam. There are small tribes whose members are said to have inherited uh, Barak, the quantity of goodness or holiness, and minister to local people. There are also lineages who are said to be descendants of the Prophet Muhammad. They are given the title of Sharif. All right, so I believe we've come to the end of our interesting facts about Libya. These were read to you by yours uh, truly, Christine, courtesy of uh, Exhibit Africa Ubuntu Initiative and compiled by everyculture.com. Uh, if you'd like to check them out, I want to thank you so much for making it this far. And uh, stay tuned for our very next uh, interesting facts on another country from the continent of Africa. Ciao for now.